As you can see, Tony likes to keep busy by working with wood. Ever since building his own house back in the 70s, he's been building and adding wooden features to his backyard. While Tony does improvise when he has to, he does also rely quite often on written plans to build his decorations. For the other structures back there, you can buy sets of plans and uh, they give you all the details and everything. So I take the basic of the plan and maybe modify this and modify that, whatever. But I do have a set of plans that I build that kind of stuff. One of his first undertakings was this impressive Asian-inspired arched arbor made of barn board. Well, that arbor wasn't supposed to look like that. It was just supposed to be a square structure. Like you see them in garden magazines and that all over. I figured, well, I'm just going to build one. When I built it, I thought it looked a little bare. So I figured, well, I'll build a couple flower boxes on the sides. So that's why it turned out the way it did, really. Sandy, who makes most of the planting decisions in the yard, puts various annual and perennial flowers in the planter boxes, or wells, on each side of the arbor. Another project Tony undertook was to build this fairly large lighthouse. I always had in the back of my head to build one of them. So I started driving around, looking around, and all I could find was these little guys about this high. So I took a picture of those, and then I just extended everything. And it's approximately six feet high. And I took a solar light and I mounted on there, and that's exactly what a, a lighthouse does. It lights up at night, or it lights all day and night. And I mounted on there, and that's what it looks like now. As you may have noticed, stones and rocks play a big role in the straighter yard. And so did some good old-fashioned farm ingenuity when it came to putting edging between the stones and areas of flowers or grass. Well, for around the rock, you can buy edging for it, but it's usually, it's not really rubber or leather, whatever you call it. So all I did was I got some used from around Baylor, some of the belts, they're six inches wide and I just rolled them out and tucked them in behind the stones and then uh, put the dirt or the crushed rock up against it. One of his most challenging projects was this one horse breaking plow. Probably took me four or five times longer to build it than what I thought it really would. But uh, the handles are the tricky spots to build and also are the shears so that they fit perfectly. But again, like I'm saying, it was a difficult piece to build. And it was used back in the early years of farming when it was drawn by a horse and that's how they started breaking their land. And every farmer had one of these. It was probably the first that, and this all came before there was steel shears and steel points on the front of the shear. This was actually all made out of wood with just one little piece of steel in the front. As you can see, the fountain acts as a centerpiece in the straighter yard. Again, stones and rocks set this area off quite nicely. Well, all the flat stones that are in the circle area, they're limestone stone. And limestone comes in layers. And what you do is you take a dead hammer and a cold chisel and you split amongst the veins and they just pop apart. And I got this stuff about an hour away and there were like huge rocks and I would just split them and bring them home. And then I would just lay them down with my little trolley. This is all a one man job. And uh, they, they weigh, some of these weigh probably up to 200 pounds, the bigger ones. I'd say the average is probably about 40, 50 pounds. Tony has built a number of decorative fixtures for his backyard with rustic looking barn and corral boards. Most of his creations salute the pioneering spirit of early settlers. Well, it's a wagon they used to use back in the olden days, uh, the horse and buggy days. They would take that to town to pick up supplies. They'd haul, if they had a bigger one, they'd haul grain to the elevator with it. That was basically their own only transportation they had. And 
two guys could sit in the front. You could put all your groceries or whatever, your parts, whatever you have, you could put them in back and it'd be drawn with two horses. Probably Tony's most intricate undertaking was building this water-powered flour mill. What this is, it's a grinding mill that they used back in the 50s and 60s. These would sit beside a waterfall and the wheel would turn and inside of this, there's a flour grinder and that would grind your wheat because there was no electricity those days. And uh, they were all over until they got electricity. So I thought I'd build one. So I got a whole bunch of old corral barn boards and I started putting this together. I did have a plan, but the only thing that was wrong with it, it only had bushings in this, in the water wheel. And this wheel's got to turn continuously at all times. So I actually devised it and put bearings in it because my biggest fear was not to have a balanced wheel. It was just a little bit of luck. It balances almost perfect. I can turn it with my finger like that. And the water just comes down the spout and on there and the pump takes it back up and it just continuously runs. I built this out of actually old style corral boards. Some of them are six feet long, some are eight feet long. The dimensions of them are, are not equal. One side might be three quarter inch, the other side might be five eighths. So it actually takes a lot of fine tuning to get everything to fit into place. Actually, my brother-in-law has scads of corral fence board and I just took it off the fences and used it. It's just your ordinary two little pumps that you have in little water tanks or whatever. I mount them, there's a metal trough at the bottom. I put those two pumps in there and then the hoses go up the inside and they come into this trough and then the water flows off the spout onto the wheels and all of a sudden the wheels will start turning and then it'll just continuously flow. Small stones and rocks of all shapes, sizes and colors can also be seen in the straighter yard. Okay, around the hedge area, there's, it's called purple crushed rock. It's actually purple pebbles that actually have a shine to them. And it's pretty unique. Uh, I found that stuff uh, in one place in Saskatoon. That's the only people that had it. And the other rock, some is ordinary crushed rock. The stuff where the trees are in the corner over there, that's what you call washed rock. The, they actually wash the rock to give it that clean look. And then the stuff around the stones in the centerpiece, that's just gray, gray crushed rock. And uh, the stuff around the around the uh, lighthouse, that is actually rubber. It looks like rock, and you can get that rubber in three or four different colors, and that's rubber. And then the rest of it is just ordinary crushed rock. Another stone in this area is known as coal rock, which Tony says can be purchased almost anywhere. He has about two or three inches of it spread over weed matting, but that doesn't mean it's entirely maintenance free. It's basically maintenance free. The only thing I have to do is, as you all know, seeds fly with the wind all the time. So probably about two, three times a year, I round up it and that keeps the weeds out. This here rock here, around the fountain, it looks like rock, but it's actually crushed brick. I just got a whole bunch of old bricks and I crushed them all up and use that as a centerpiece. Tony says he's been able to access most of his old barn and corral board just a few minutes outside of Humboldt at his brother's place. He says he plans on continually adding new features to his yard as time goes on.